What's going on, Dad? I'm putting gas in your machine. I don't know why you ran out. Oh, you don't know why we ran out? <laughs> Are you sure? Hello everyone, welcome to Hillbro. Today we are back out here in Atomic City, just uh, south of the INL and out in the desert uh, west of Idaho Falls, between Idaho Falls and Arco. Driving into Atomic City, it looks like they've been uh, doing some maintenance work out here. They just freshly oiled and sealed the road all the way out here and through town, which is kind of nice. So the reason why we are out here today is we are joined with the Yellowstone D Divide Trail uh, system.com so we're here with a group we're gonna head out towards cedar butte which you can learn or see uh, cedar butte on one of our previous videos a little bit of history about atomic city along with our ride on cedar butte the video was a lot of fun you should go check it out anyways we're gonna head that direction like before except we're gonna head straight south after that towards aberdeen and we're gonna try and find where the elk like to migrate and hang out to nest out in the desert out there. Steve says he knows a spot where the elk like to be and just nestle. And what's crazy, he says like, you can drive by it all day and you'll never see them out there unless you're specifically looking. They blend into the desert like crazy and there's just hundreds of them. And so we found that kind of intriguing. So we got grandpa here today. We got the double X's. We got Riker with us. I don't know, do we like call you dad or grandpa? Call me dad, I just heard the grandpa. I'm Riker's grandpa. But I don't feel like a grandpa. Some days I do, but I'm not. starting to call him grandpa more and more because more and more I am dad. This will be fun. I can't believe I'm back here to Atomic City. <laughs> as long as I'm not going hey. east. Yeah, I had a good visit with Steve. He's all excited to take this stride and find these elk. And so we're going to load up. We're going to catch up to them. Hopefully we have a good day of riding and filming and just uh, exploring and learning Idaho.
so we made it out here to our destination, but it's still very thick in the air from the smoke we're getting from Nevada, California, Oregon. You see the big Southern Butte uh, behind me. So we are basically from where the big Southern Butte uh, in a straight line, almost shooting directly towards Aberdeen. Uh, but we're still not all the way to Aberdeen, so we're about directly west of Blackfoot, maybe a little bit south of Blackfoot. Steve from Yellowstone Divide Trail Systems or Atomic City Trails, he calls this Elk Ridge. There's a lava flow right behind me, and out in that lava flow is where the herds of elk like to hang out. It's a pretty good ride. The first part we went, we scooted south of the Cedar Butte. A uh, little tighter trails, uh, not as fast, but just as fun and scenic. And then we cut over to a more fast trail and just boogied on down here. I love Atomic City for that reason. There's a good variety of trails, and if you want to open it wide open, there's plenty of that, of those trails to do that around here too. How's it going, Rick? It's good, it's fun. Yeah, how's grandpa's machine? Good. We were riding down the trail and I seen Shanta uh, stop occasionally along the trail and go out into the weeds. What were you doing? I was picking up cans. You know, unfortunately, people come out here and leave their garbage and we come out here to have fun and so we end up picking up after people that leave it. So anyhow, just a reminder to everybody, keep the trails clean, keep the trails open. Absolutely. It's a beautiful area out here. I know it's secluded and desolate, but it doesn't mean we need to uh, abuse it at all. So Absolutely. I appreciate you doing that. Absolutely. I don't see any moving through there right now. If they're moving, you'll see it from here. But they have to be moving in the opening between flows. So the farmer fields are all over here. And they'll hide in here in these cedar trees. And they'll just go out at night and feast on hay and grain. And they have all these trails in among the lava flows where they walk. And then some of them open out right here and you're at a high elevation so you can kind of see them. So we've been chilling out for a little bit, uh, looking through the scope, trying to glass things through the drone over the area. Unfortunately, we're not able to see any of the herds of elk, but this desert is full of those elk. The, because of the heat, it's not as hot today as it's been, but because of the heat recently, they could be nestled closer to shade, water, or even the farms. But there's thousands of elk out here, and they all migrate through the this desert in southeast Idaho, all the way from Nevada, all the way up through here by the buttes, the big southern butte, past INL, past St. Anthony. They'll they'll migrate through the St. Anthony Dunes and that's why the desert around the St. Anthony Dunes gets closed for a time and then they'll head on up to uh, Montana. Well because we couldn't find any elk uh, this go around uh, we decided to just break off from the rest of the group and we're going to take the double X's and we're going to run all the way down to Minidoka. Hopefully get all the way down there. Uh, there should be like caves and other things that might be cool to see but at least with that route what we can do today is connect essentially Atomic City, Arco area, all the way down to everything on Interstate 84. And from there, we'll be able to open up even beyond the Nevada border and Utah border. It'll be fun. Yeah. You guys ready? Yep. Okay, let's do it.
Well, especially when you dropped into this valley, it just got hot. Oh, man, it's like, there's another car out there that has as good a speeder as that. It's the only way to do it, guys. Well, we made it to Minidoka. Minidoka doesn't have any fuel, so we drove all the way down to Rupert. And we're here just getting fuel or maybe get a little treat, a uh, milkshake, something to snack on so we could head back. So hey, that was a good drive down. And uh, it's actually a really good trail. So we know that the trail from Atomic City down to Minidoka, there's like a section of it that was really uh, a little slower, not bad, but slower. But then most of both ends is just open. I mean, you can only go so fast because you still have to make the corners and you don't want to just roost the corners and ruin the trail. But uh, yeah, any machine, make it down there. These things did just fine. Now we just got to fill up both the tanks. So I had a uh, double X's tank and the belly tanks. <laughs> and head back up. Maybe we'll find some fun things like we'll go check out Bear Trap Cave. Hi. <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Oh, you brought a spare. Yeah. I didn't know you brought a spare. I didn't bring a spare. Man, you hit a lot of grasshoppers, Dad. Call me the grasshopper slayer. Nailed a rock. Surprised it didn't pop a hole or bend the rim. What are you sitting on? This is either really fun or really gay. <laughs> yeah. Put some side by side race seats on it. Yeah, probably. That'll be a lot more fun. <laughs> it's called Burgers. <laughs> Burgers Inc. Yeah, Burgers Etc. or whatever. Yeah, Burgers Etc. They make a good shake, though. Must be their special. Mm. I think that milkshake of just Scott's gonna shake more. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna turn into cheese. Cheese curd shake. <laughs> Come out like cheese curd shake. So we just finished a good meal here at Burgers, etc. I think that's how you say it. <laughs> But uh, on the way down to Minidoka, we ran into another group while riding, and they're kind of from this area. They're kind of filling us out on what's cool. Uh, we obviously passed by Bear Trap Cave, but um, but they say there's another cave that's even better. So we're gonna follow them, and they're gonna show us uh, around the desert just north of here and explore it. So we made it all the way out to Bear Trap Cave. It, what's crazy is uh, you wanna be careful, especially at night, because coming south on this trail, this road kind of does a slight curve to the left. If you're not making that curve, then you're going straight into that hole. <laughs> and so if you ever come here, get approaching Bear Trap Cave at night, Usually these caves seem to be kind of like off the trail a little ways. This is not off the trail a little ways. It's almost right in the middle of the trail. So keep that in mind if you ever come to Bear Trap Cave from the north.
just looking out on the flats of the desert, you'd never guess there's a hole in the middle of the desert that's a cave. And apparently this is kind of a part of like a 15 mile tube that you can technically explore as a cave. This one's called Bear Trap Cave, probably because if something were to fall in, it would be difficult to get out. Granted, that's not all that hard to get out of. Look at that, an owl. Oh, that's one of those uh, cool looking owls. Oh, Did you see that? Yeah, it was. I wish I had, a, had it zoomed in on there. Those are cool looking owls. Hey. <laughs> it's not a very deep cave, is it? A big bear trap cave. We walked, what, like three, 400 feet? Hey Riker, well, what did we find? Cave. Now what did we find in the cave? Oh, we found a, a foam ring. Okay, so you guys, we found this foam ring. Take a wild guess what this is. I was, we found it at the entrance of the cave, walked through the cave and I was trying to think, what could this be, what could this be? It's a giant, it's a ring to a giant. It's his wedding band. <laughs> yeah. No? So, <laughs> as I was walking out, I was like, oh, I know what this is. This belongs as one of those foam grips on an RC remote controller. So someone's been down in this cave rock crawling. The RC striker. Yeah. We need to do it sometime. <laughs> yeah, I'll bring them all the way out here. <laughs> We've got stuff closer to home we can do that. So that's a pretty cool cave. Not very big, but uh, consistent all the way through. So this other group that, we're, that we ran into out here, says that there's ice caves just east of here, just out in this part of the desert. And we're gonna go follow them and see if we can't find these ice caves and see what those are all about. Holy cow. Come over here, you can see better. He's Riker. Oh wow, that's like, what, 40 feet? A um, earthquake. I don't know if the GoPro can pick it up, but down, 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 and then right there's the This is weird. Look at that, right? They've, it's like you've come to a medieval Castle from thousands of years ago. They built like a catacomb in there. <laughs> this is pretty cool. Pretty cool. I'm scared, Riker. I'm afraid skeletons are gonna jump out on me. Okay, I'm gonna admit. I watched Alien 1, 2, and 3 this week, <laughs> and it's creepy. Holy crap! Yeah, be careful. So that's still, it's open there, right? That's, that's, a, that's like a... Yeah. Holy flip. That is like 100 feet down. How's it look? You're bored? Yeah. That's not how you get down. I never knew there was such a thing around here. You don't want to fall down that. That's not bear trap cave. That's like dragon's cave, bear trap cave. That's like something you'd see down in Mordor. Oh, yeah. This really looks like the Lord of the Rings. That, that, Look at that bridge, Isaac. The I saw. It's like the cave the or the bridge, the bell rock broke with Gandalf on. There's got to be cave orcs in here somewhere. <laughs> There's that white... That white spot way, way, way down there. That's like the bottom. I'm out. There's no way you're coming out of that. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. That was one of the coolest and creepiest things I have ever seen out in this desert. I had no idea that it was even out here. So the Minidoka road between Arco in Minidoka, it's not, you can tell it's well-maintained, but you can also tell that it's not used a lot. 
and this is off the beaten path from there we'll have to look on the map and see exactly where this is at because we were we were led here I, we did not purposely come here um, this was a complete surprise for us today and by far one of the coolest and creepiest things we have found in this desert so i'm standing next to that uh, sever this is the top that falls like 150 feet down so you do not want to fall down that well you can tell where this crevice goes yeah get your drone out look, look at look at that castle castle looking thing i mean this really looks like something out of lord of the rings <laughs> yeah. so that would be the remnants of sauron's tower thank goodness the hobbits were here before us getting kind of dark but we just came out of those crystal ice caves and just down the fissure ways is this uh, explosion crater and uh, the drone got a couple of cool shots of it massive crater in the fissure that you can hike into drops like I don't know 7,500 feet and just another world under there it's just amazing I can't believe the stuff we are finding out here it's just astonishing well i think that pretty much wraps it up for us there's so much more to explore i'd love to do it but it's getting dark and we still have about 50 miles to get home not even home to get to atomic city and then we got to go home and hopefully find a gopro one of the go one of my gopros fell off on the way around cedar butte so hopefully in the dark we can find it because it's got some good footage of my kids first airplane flight we're gonna head back North, Atomic City, the Buttes, and uh, we'll see, we'll make our way. <laughs> What's going on, Dad? I'm putting gas in your machine i don't know why you ran out oh you don't know why we ran out are you sure because we were flying <laughs> we got we got separated isaac's got these green whips and so we're always looking for green whips but we lost them at the, one of the intersections we were supposed to go to arco i remember taking a right hand turn so that but we went down that road not very far and i said nah we're not going back to bear trap yeah that's not right not very far as in like i would say it was eight miles you went all the way to the next intersection area it was six miles six miles <laughs> i never thought my dad would take a wrong turn with a sign that points in our direction wait 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 explain that one <laughs> but he it pointed in the direction and he didn't it take it and Argo. If you think you can navigate after being out here, try all during the daylight and then all of a sudden do it at night. And no no moon. Uh, there are so many intersections. And if you have no mountain range or no view to see, it is so easy to get turned around out here in the desert. The side lights, they look like they could be lights coming from Blackfoot. Your phone is dead. You don't even know which way north. I should have just got out and found the Big Dipper and looked for the North Star. <laughs> so, so, but there's but there's smoke in the air, and so it's actually covering a lot of stars and a lot of lights. And so it's very difficult to navigate either, even by stars. So now he's looking for our lights, but we're behind him. And so... We got separated and we don't have communications for that distance and there's no cell service 
I so I followed the map back the way we came and he went toward Big Southern Butte, found the trail there and they got they were they stayed ahead of us. But because of all of our backtracking, we ran out of fuel. And so a lot of little miracles in this deal. Um but oh yeah, earlier today I'd lost a GoPro. We've already found the GoPro. That's a little miracle. Uh, the fact that we could see each other's lights and know we were communicating to each other without phones, which we're now dying. Uh, just miracle, miracle, miracle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> what more can you say? <laughs>